Hello, I'm Jessica Liley and this is Aussie Wristwatch and today we are going to talk about the famed Tag Heuer Monaco and Steve McQueen. But before we get cracking, please remember to hit the like button at the bottom of your screen and also if you haven't already the magic red subscribe button because those buttons help me with the YouTube algorithm gods to keep this channel running and um, <clears throat> allow me to make this content. So thank you for watching and let's get into this. Okay, as brief as I can, history on TAG and TAG Heuer in particular, founded in 1860 by Eduard Heuer when he was only 20 years old, which uh, is unbelievable if you think about it. But <laughs> He quickly made a name for himself as a quality manufacturer of reliable and robust chronographs and timepieces, which contributed to watchmaking innovation and inventions like the oscillating pinion, which is actually still used today. <clears throat> but it was actually Jack Hoyer, his grandson, who kind of ferried Tag into the brand that we know it today, ultimately. Um, he was responsible for the Monaco, which was born basically out of the invention of Erwin Picaret, who was an owner of a large Swiss industry making watch. And he created a square watch case, which was guaranteed to be waterproof. And it was the first square case waterproof of its time. And Jack was ever the innovator was attracted to the new design and he negotiated for exclusive rights over this product which he then trademarked and the first version of the Hoyer Monaco was finally launched at the Basel Fair and it was the first waterproof automatic chronograph with a square case the retail price at the time was 200 bucks and it was prevented in it was sorry presented in two variations being the 1133B which stood for blue, and the 1133G, which stood for grey. Um, <clears throat> and basically, they were an epic watch. And they were made famous by legendary actor Steve McQueen. Now, there's no legends without heroes, right? So, without a doubt, Steve McQueen gave exceptional exposure to this watch during the filming of his film, Le Mans, which was filmed in 1970, released in 1971. Now, at the time, Swiss racing car driver Joe Siffert was the leading driver for the Porsche team competing in the World Sports Car Championship, and he was actually a consultant on the film. He was also a friend of Jack Hoyer, and he was also the ambassador for the brand on the racetrack. Jack was very big into um, promotion and marketing, which I think remains to this day with this brand, which is pretty cool. Um, and Steve McQueen took inspiration from Siffert to play the film's main character. Incidentally, he was also racing in the Porsche team at the time for the film. And he decided to wear the same jumpsuit as the Swiss champion. So just like Siffert, he wore the jumpsuit with the large Hoyer logo on the chest. And of course, a Hoyer chronograph on his wrist. But these two differed slightly in that Siffert wore an Ottavia and uh, Steve McQueen opted for the square shaped, yep, you guessed it, blue dialed Monaco. Now, the one I'm wearing isn't the exact one from the film, uh, but it's a nod to that variation. Look, it was highly visible during the film. So Hoyer products appeared for about 15 minutes in the film, which is a significant amount of time and screen time. And it was this watch was on the wrist of the famous actor during famed uh, racing sequences in the film. And it's probably one of the most recognisable sport watches of its day. Now, fun fact, in 2012, one of the two Monaco wrist watches actually worn by Steve McQueen during the filming uh, was sold at a Hollywood memorabilia auction for a hammer price of 650000 just under 800000 if you include the buyer's premium. Now, in 2020, 
another Monaco, the reference 1133B, so the blue one, worn by Steve, during the movie, hammered for a record-breaking 2.2 million at the Phillips Racing Pulse auction in New York City. It was one of the stars of the auction and it was originally listed as price on request. The model started bidding at 200 grand and over seven minutes etched its way up to 1.8 and soon at the 2.2 with the buyer's premium. It's the most expensive Hoyer wristwatch ever sold. I don't know about you guys. I guess if I had that kind of money, I probably would be trying to get my hands on one of those original watches for sure. Who am I kidding? I'm an enthusiast, one day hopefully a collector, but not there yet. Now, Steve McQueen actually gifted a watch to Haig Altunian. I've probably pronounced that wrong, so apologies. But he was the chief mechanic at Le Mans. And as the story goes in a 2015 documentary titled Steve McQueen, The Man and Le Mans, McQueen handed the watch to Hake and he said, thank you for keeping me alive. Now, I don't know about you guys, but in the 1970s on a film set, I'm imagining that safety wasn't actually as paramount as it is today in a workplace. And so then sprinkle in the whole, you know, motor racing aspect of that. And I reckon Haig probably worked his little butt off. And I think Steve was probably eternally grateful. Ironically, Haig didn't want the gift. He thought it was too much and too extravagant. And he thought Steve should give it to his wife or his son. Unfortunately, or fortunately for him, depending on how you see it, Steve had already engraved the watch um, and actually to Haig Le Mans 1970. I'm going to throw a picture up. It's pretty cool. Um, it, it's got a solid case back. This watch I'm wearing has a clear case back, which looks awesome, but obviously you can't engrave that. Now there's been many iterations of this watch over the years uh, and strong uh, market interest and competitions. Now the iterations I'm going to throw up so you can have a look at as we're talking, but I won't go through them all because there are many. <laughs> um, and there have been many different dials. There's been grey dials, white dials, blue dials, black dials. Um, the Dark Lord in 1974 had a PVD-coated steel case, uh, which made it pretty, pretty amazing. The other important feature to remember with these, which my watch does not have, but on the original ones, it was Monaco Hoya as the logo. And you'll find on the new ones, it's Monica with the tag Hoya logo, which this one has. So I'm yet to add a Monica Hoya to the collection as a purist, but just for those people out there interested, that's definitely something to look out for. Now, Steve has remained synonymous with this watch over the years. Um, I mean, to this day, he's still promoting the watch there's still um as late as 1999 there are still billboards with his picture on them albeit somewhat older than he was with the first film but it's a watch for the ages and it's classic and in fact it's still synonymous with motor racing today you can find this watch in formula one on the wrist of the red bull racing team and in particular max verstappen wears it a lot uh, it seems to be his watch of choice in terms of what I guess they hand him to wear before and after each race. Um, you know, similarly, it's not a tag, but you the Richard Mill watches a Ferrari and McLaren. You see them very prominently on the wrist. It's the same tag is synonymous with Red Bull as a major sponsor. Their whole team wears a whole raft of tag watches but it is the Monaco that you see most frequently worn on Max Verstappen's wrist. It's very cool. Now, I'm not a huge Max fan, but I appreciate him and I appreciate um, him wearing that watch. But for me, the Monaco is always going to be synonymous with Steve McQueen. The guy is the king of cool. And look, you know, he made a few films, to be honest with you, but not, not, not a whole raft of films like Bullet I think was his other really famous film but this watch just has withstood the test of time and has gone through history and it's it's iconic you know the fact that it's the first square waterproof chronograph is awesome 
um, and that they've trademarked it and that they've kept it. All these, it's like decades later and we're still wearing this watch and wanting this watch. Um, I will review the watch in its entirety at another time, but I wanted to just talk a little bit about the history and and having this watch become so famous from a film like Le Mans. Um, it's probably one of the better aspects of the film, but we're not doing a film review, so we won't get into that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and me just talking about watches and a little bit of history. Remember to hit the like button for me and help me out with the algorithm gods of YouTube. And if you like this video and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the magic red button. Let's go on this journey together. Let's just talk watches. Pop your comments below. I'll get to them. I'll Let's have a chat. Uh, I want to know your thoughts on the tag. Do you have a Monaco? Is it on your list? Which one do you want? I'd really love to know that actually, because there are a few variations still out there on the market uh, and they bring new ones out. So do you want a new one? Do you want a classic one? Let me know. Thanks guys. Until next time.